Hello, everyone. Welcome here. I'm glad to be with you this afternoon. And um, I hope um, your day has been so far so good. Uh, my name is Virginia Pradhan. I am an international human rights attorney, a speaker, a writer, and, uh, and um, a victory coach. I'm here to encourage you and to share with you that uh, your life is important, and most of all, that freedom is precious. I um, had, um, I, I don't know if I can say honor and privilege, or um, I was forced, maybe it's the best uh, way to say it, I was forced to live under um, a socialist, in Romania uh, by the grace of God later on, as I will explain, as I grew up, I fought against socialists and I am alive. And I will be happy to share with you what socialists can do to a country. And uh, also, um, also to understand uh, how important it is for each one of us to go and vote on this election. Um, I grew up in socialist Romania, and I remember for from the time that maybe I was six or seven. That's that's when my memory starts back and to remember about that land and the situation. I remember my parents being very politically correct outside, but also very. Um, whispering inside of the home about what the socialist government can do and has done to them. They were so upset because the socialist government will take the freedom away from them no matter how obedient they were. Not only my parents, but everyone around. So um, I ask myself as a, a child, why people are so, um fearful they know the the truth but they are fearful to speak the truth even in their own home they were fearful they were whispering the truth so uh, i was told that at a very important election in romania uh during the capitalist era uh, my parents told me um the Russian uh, started to come into Romania and kind of conquer uh, Romania. But in the same time, they were presenting the fact that people should vote, people should be for socialists and uh, um, started to say about what kind of benefits, free, 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 free things for, about socialists. What happened uh, close to that time, we had election in Romania and some of people believed the lies of free, free, free stuff from socialists and they voted for socialists. Others were too fearful to go and vote because the Russian already occupied Romania and they were fearful that somebody will notice them that they vote for freedom. So in that election, because they didn't vote. Those who wanted to keep capitalism, uh, Romania was transformed into a, a socialist country. Before I forget to tell you, because I believe it's important, socialists established in Romania for 53 years. Socialist is not a um, pair of shoes that you are buying today Maybe tomorrow you notice that they are not comfortable or in a week and you um, change them. No, socialism is not like this. In Russia it was 70 something years, 75 or more. And look in China for how many years. Once socialist establishes, it's just absolutely uh, very hard to, um, to find your way to freedom. So um, I, as a child, I still look around and, and try to find a way to see if somebody in my life is speaking the truth. 
So I look around and I notice at our family reunions that they were, our relatives will group in three and surround, they surround themselves by those three, they surround those three people. And I did my research. And my in my research, I discovered that uh, all all three of them were were lawyers. So um, for that reason, um, somewhere in my heart, as a young kid, I said, "Oh, I found a way. I'm gonna go to law school, and I'm gonna find the truth, and I'm gonna speak up the truth, even though my relatives, the lawyers, uh, knew the the answer, but they didn't want to." Um, to uh, speak up the truth. So I went to um, um, to law school. And for those of you who might not know, uh, this is the book, Saving My Assassin. Uh, it was pu published by Tyndale House Publisher. And um, I will not have time to cover everything in uh, that is in my memoir, but in the, my memoir, you will find out that going to law school in socialist it's different than going into law school in uh, in america you have the freedom to go wherever you want and apply to go to socialist in uh, romania at that time i did not know and how how good it is sometimes that we don't know everything in advance but at that time i did not know that before i was allowed to apply to fill out the application for uh, to be admitted at law school and take an exam, I uh, the the government uh, look at my political file. Okay, what meant this is in socialist, no matter where socialist establishes, from the day that you are born to the day you, you died, socialist government keeps a file on you, and will not allow you to look in the file and to say, oh, this is a mistake. Let me tell you, let me prove it to you that it's a mistake and correct it. No, no, no. So the government look at those uh, um, file for three, three um, reasons. And, and the book describes in um, exactly what those reasons were. And number one was um, if my parents, to see if my parents ever organized something to um, destroy the, the government and replace the government with a capitalist government. That's what they were looking for. The second one was they were looking to see if um, um, their children my parents, if us as kids ever reported them for, if they said something about the socialist government inside the home. And the third one was if my parents were Christians. So I passed the exam and the three questions that the government had and uh, um, I went to law school. I went to law school and I studied really well. I was so happy to be in law school. I thought that I'm gonna find in, in law books uh, all the, uh, everything that I need in order the truth and speak up for the truth. I finished uh, law school and um, again, in socialist, it's different than in capitalist. Um, here in, uh, in, in America, I went to law school here in America too. So I know from both sides how you go to law school in uh, socialist, how you go to law school in capitalist, how you um, uh, start your, your career in socialist and how you start your career in capitalist. So in socialist, um, the government dictates what kind of job you have and where you have, what city, no matter where you live, especially in the capital, in some some areas will reserve just for uh, um, some, some people. Um, I wanna tell you that again, one other thing that I didn't know uh, when I went to law school and, and in socialist was that the reason why the socialist government has all those rules and everything about very strict to uh, admit a specific number of people and uh, why they did it that way. Well, later on, when I started to defend Christians in the interrogation room, I found out, as they told me, that 
um, the government accepted my file and accepted me to be in law school because they expect me to be loyal to the government and to defend the government against its people. So that's the way the government works in communist and socialist. And that's the way it works everywhere, not only in Romania, but in every part of the world. So as I graduated from law school, I uh, um, learn and I study so well and every single day I will go to work and I will believe that that day will be the day when I will touch the truth, I will find it and speak up for the truth. And after a year or something, I remember coming to my office and um, being very discouraged. I'm not a quitter, I'm a fighter. Uh, but that day it was very sad for me because I was thinking that I'm going to just give up. I cannot find the truth. In fact, I told my assistant, I put my briefcase on her desk and I said, I don't want to be a lawyer anymore. She looked up at me like, where have you been? What are you dreaming about? Come back to reality. So um, she gave me three files and she said, three people will come, your clients will come to see you and one is in your office. So I walk in my office, very disturbed, uh, thinking she doesn't understand what I am going through. And um, in my mind, I was thinking, where is the truth? How I can find the truth? So I recognized the client who was in my office because he was very, I have been working with him for a year or more. And he was there to bring more documents and to tell me about the new situation in his case. So, um, I noticed any time I talk with him that um, he was different, um, but many times I was thinking he was crazy and I, I was um, contemplating, I need to fix this man, but I never had the time because uh, there was always another client coming. So that day as I walk inside, inside my office um, and thinking, what is the truth? Why I can find the truth? He was putting documents on my desk and everything. And all of a sudden I look at him and I heard myself saying, I want to have in your life, in my life, what you have in your life, because he had peace and joy and contentment in, in a land where people were just fearful and have no joy and so forth. And as he looked at me, he answered, do you go to church? And I was thinking, what in the world going to church has anything to do with the way you act. And I was thinking, oh my gosh, I forgot you, you are crazy. I don't know why I ask you this question, but I said it inside of me, I didn't say it loud to him, but he wrote something on the piece of paper and gave it to me and said, would you like to come to our church Sunday? And I hear myself as I pick up the piece of paper that he gave me and I said, yes. I mean, that was the most uh, crazy thing that a lawyer in socialist can say to a client. I don't know what you're doing at church. And by the way, not long before that, the government, the dictator in Romania, Nicolae Ceaușescu, declared himself God. He um, required all of us to worship him alone, and he started to demolish churches and put Christians under persecution. So I had no idea what they were doing in that church, but I was so desperate that I said yes. And more than that, next Sunday, believe me, with my girls, I was at his church and we walk inside of the church and there I heard the gospel and I accepted Christ and I became a Christian. But not only that, that day I understood that God brought me to the legal profession for that reason, to learn and understand that he is the truth, the way and the life. And the, the fact that I was going to law school he brought me that way in order to know him. I have to tell you that I didn't have to look for clients. 
because many Christians came to uh, to me to defend them. There were Christians who had Bible in their home, and, um, and the government will uh, will take them to um, um, and arrest them because they had a Bible, or they will watch a movie like Jesus movie, and uh, the government will come and take just with with their family, nobody else, and will take uh, the parents uh, to jail and uh, the kids put them in orphanages. Sometimes nobody knew where the kids will be taken. The um, church will um, will be in need of repair and they will apply for a permit from, from the city, from the government. And the government will put them on the waiting list until the, the church will be in disrepair and the government will come and demolish the church, confiscate the land and so forth. So I started to defend all those churches and I, by the grace of God, I find the law that existed in, um, in the Romanian system. There was a, a law that protected religious rights from the capitalist era, but the socialist government did not destroy them or uh, annulate them for a reason. And the reason was because the socialist is based on lies, rumors, and, and fake news. Uh, the, the dictator wanted to receive from America the most favored nation status, which brought to Romania a lot of economical benefits, but that was attached by President Ronald Reagan to the respecting of human rights. Well, the dictator did not respect the human rights and he used all the money from the most favored nation status to build his palace. So when I started to defend churches and Christians, many of my cases became part of the um, United Nations reports on human rights violations and part of the uh, Department of State, United States Department of State's reports on human rights violations. And you can imagine that the dictator was um, exposed and he was not happy with, with me. He, uh, they will interrogate me daily, beat me, torture me, place under house arrest. And the last things that, that they did was to send an assassin to my office, uh, an assassin so-called uh, client, uh, to kill me. That's the reason why my book is called Saving My Assassin. Um, as he came to, to my office, uh, they, they, the government knew everything about my whereabouts because my office and my home, everything was uh, um, full of microphones. So the government knew everything about our whereabouts. So uh, the assassin came to my office later in, uh, in that day, exactly when my assistant was ready to go to pick up her kids and take them home. So... Um, the minute that he came into my office, he pointed a gun to me and said, I'm here to kill you and uh, I'm not your client. By the grace of God, I uh, shared the gospel with him and he accepted Christ and uh, he left my office as a brother in Christ. Um, I never imagined uh, when that happened that years later, he will look for me in America and he will come and he will write a chapter in my book. He, so now you have not only my perspective of what happened that day, but also his perspective. And what God is doing in his life is absolutely amazing. Uh, when I came to United States of America, because a few months after that, I came to United States of America because President Ronald Reagan was very concerned that the dictator will kill me and my family. So what the dictator, what the President Ronald Reagan did was uh, offering the dictator one more year of most favored national status with one condition, and that was to let us come to United States. Uh, I came to United States uh, empty-handed. 
I did not, I knew, and I know five languages, now six with English, but I didn't know one word in English when I came to America. I uh, learned English. I didn't have money. Um, I had two girls with me um, under 10 years old and I was pregnant with my son. I came with my husband who shortly after that uh, abandoned us and I found myself in a foreign country, not knowing English, no money, um, learning English and, and trying to, to do the best for my kids. So uh, I learned English. I went back to law school here in Dallas, Texas at SMU. And I, uh, I built my law firm. I work with the Alliance Defender of Freedom and other organization, Tony Perkins, uh, Family Research Council and others who defend freedom and, and stand up for freedom. And I train um, people as a victory coach and consultant, how to stay on God's principles and how to build their lives and their children's life as Christians and not to be fearful. Um, I uh, want to emphasize how important uh, this election is, and I want to um, tell you that when I came to the United States, like every immigrant, um, I came as a political refugee, but you follow some legal procedure that is offered in this, uh, this country. And a year after I came to um, to United States, the dictator was uh, uh, killed and, uh, um, um, on Christmas Day. And uh, six months after he was killed, we had in Romania the first free election after 53 years of socialism. And at that time, as uh, I was here in America, but I was a permanent resident of the United States. In another word, I have all the rights except the right to vote. But I had the right to vote for Romania. And uh, because I had three kids, I was a single mom. The only way to vote was to drive from Dallas, Texas to Washington, D.C., and to vote for the first time for um, um, a person that I was, uh, I wanted to be elected. Um, I want you to know that under communist, when we had election, the government was the one who will put the name of the person who the government wanted to be elected. No other person was allowed to put his name or to be a candidate. So to me, to drive from Dallas, Texas to Washington, D.C. to vote for the first time and to choose a person on, on the ballot was very important to me. Uh, I also want to say, I know you heard the story, and I know you heard that when I was very little, six years old, I look around and I ask myself why my parents and other relatives were so fearful. So I want to say uh, to each one of you that this election in November it's the most important election of our lives. And I, I'm asking you, maybe that little girl in me, it's asking you, but also the adult in me, it's asking you, please do not repeat my parents, my parents' mistakes. Please do not put your children, force your children as I was forced to live under the horrors of socialism because it will be for a long time and for generations to come. Uh, many times I said, and I want to say it to you, uh, please, when you read my book, Saving My Assassin, read chapter three at least three or four times. It's a story of my uncle, the story that he told me. So I know exactly how it goes. But I want to tell you, it's a story of a man who was too fearful to speak up when the time was right. And later on in life, he was not able to look into his eyes. 
And in fact, later on, many times the government put him in a psychiatric hospital because he would say the truth and they will say that he is crazy. Uh, but later on in life, he uh, went into his room and, and uh, refused to eat until he died. I don't want anyone, no friend, no uh, acquaintance, no even enemies, to go through what my uncle and I'm sure many people uh, went through because they were not courageous enough to speak when the time was right. So I'm asking you, if you don't have it in you to fight for yourself, please fight for your children, for your children's children. America is the best country in the world. We brought Christ and freedom to people all over the world. It's time for us to bring Christ and freedom back to America. And you, your vote and my vote might be the most important one that will keep freedom in America. And not only freedom in America, but people all over the world are looking to America, are looking to the freedom that we have here, and are, they are looking for directions. Your life is very important. Your vote is very important. I used to think and to believe that my hero uh, is Ronald Reagan. Yes, he has done amazing things to save me, to work on, on my behalf when I, I was far away and, you know, in Romania. But I want to tell you, my hero is Donald Trump. He accomplished and so many things in 47, 48 uh, months, more than people that have been for 47, Biden or others, in, in, in the government. He loves America and he loves America to be number one. If you don't like his way of uh, speaking sometimes or his way of saying one thing and another, I am asking you to, to uh, vote for his accomplishment, to vote for what he stands for, for religious rights, for freedom to have guns and protect yourself against maybe a government who might want to take your guns, your property, or your right to speak. He is for defending our freedom and uh, allowing us to flourish as free people in this country. He loves um, people around the world, but he is the president of the United States. And I'm asking you to vote for Donald Trump because you vote for your own freedom. You vote for your own rights that you will be able to go to church. You might be able to build your business or to extend your business. You will be able to leave whatever you want, a city and town, um, to um, have the kind of uh, healthcare education that um, you can have and otherwise the government will take away uh, the education of your children, the um, place where the kind of um, business they can have and so forth. I don't want one day to say to you, I told you so. I'm telling you the truth now and I'm asking you if you to fight for yourself, to fight for freedom. Choosing Donald Trump, you choose your own freedom. You choose the right to live as God gave us the right to be free people and to live in a free land. And I'm asking you also to vote for your children's children and your children's children. There is no better place that is that america i have been living in in socialist and communist and i have been uh, living here for many years and from the bottom of my heart i am telling you america is the best country in the world you cannot expect america to be heaven one day we will go to heaven but the closest place to heaven is america I hope that um, you will go and vote if you already voted. 
um, I hope that you will help someone to go to vote, maybe an elderly person, or you will watch a uh, single mom uh, with kids, you will watch their kids, and you will do something uh, that day that will make it easier for someone to go and vote. I hope you will share my message with others so they might be aware um, of what is expected if socialists will come. I have, from the bottom of my heart, I am telling you, I have been speaking in America all over, including not conservative uh, universities and colleges. And I have to tell you, young people are listening. They just, they are just not informed about the truth. They are bombarded with lies. So I advise you, if you have a young person or a person who is in love with those uh, lies, please, please um, contact them. Please share this with, with them, share, share my message and make sure that you go and vote. I'll be more than happy to answer any of your questions. If you have questions, I am doing on my uh, Facebook, uh, Virginia Pradhan, I'm doing Facebook Live Wednesday and Saturday at 10 o'clock Central Time. And I answer all the questions and everything that people might have or, or concern about voting, about socialists and um, capitalists and communists and anything that you want you want me to to respond i will be more than happy if you want to keep in contact with me please go to virginia prodan books.com um i i don't know if uh, anybody is uh, is here and asking questions yes socialist it's evil it's not kind and it's not fair in fact many people will lie to you and say that socialists will create equality no that's not true first of all all these people that are devoted to socialists they hope and expect that they will be part of the elite of uh, socialists but because the number of people that will be in charge will be so small it will be such a war among themselves and their many of them will be killed and destroyed in the process. Also, a socialist is a system that in the beginning will eat everything, everything that capitalists created and will be at point where there is nothing that will be produced because nobody's going to work, you know, to um, have a business by the way businesses private property will not exist your your house will be taken away uh, nobody is going to be in a position to create something and everybody will be poor you had seen maybe uh, pictures of uh, people waiting in line for food because when the government is in control or production or price or anything else they will uh, manipulate you they will give you the number of eggs or flowers or or whatever uh, bread slice of bread that you can eat you are more than a slave in their hands Yes, you're right. You're right, Chris, Trump 2020. Yes, vote for Trump and keep us from uh, uh, becoming a socialist country. No question about this. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate your, your kind words. Um, uh, yes, to buy to buy my book, virginiaprodanbooks.com, you can go to virginiaprodanbooks.com and on the top of, uh, of the um, website, it says buy um, Saving My Assassin, or you can go to virginiaprodanbooks.com slash buy. That's, that's the same thing. And if you want me to autograph your book, I will be more than happy to, to do this. Um, um uh, let's see um yes i um i'm 
when you talk with your kids or if you give your kids uh, my book, uh, and I, I learned this from a college student or, or graduate uh, student, um, that's not my, my wisdom. I'm sharing with you the wisdom that I got from him. He, he called me and he said to me, I, I want to share with you. I've read your book, but I want to share with you how I got my book, your book. And he said, I, I uh, visited my aunt and just a few minutes before I was ready to leave her house, uh, she gave me your book and she said, I read this book and it sounds very interesting. I would love for you to read it and tell me your opinion. And she said she was very clever and uh, you changed my mind. And you can do the same thing. Don't, don't just say to them, oh, you're stupid. You just believe all this lie, read this book and everything. Nobody's going to read that. But because when you approach them, I want you young people or uh, whatever age might be, remember that we all had a time when we wanted to change the world. And in their mind, they want to change the world. They have no idea that this generation is the first generation in American history wanted to uh, change the world in a very, very dangerous and negative way. They, in fact, want to give up their freedom. But until you explain to them, until you ask them questions, until you give the book and discuss the book with them, um, they will not. They will not believe. They have been for years, for years, brainwashed uh, by by the government. So uh, uh, these uh, these uh, liberals and socialists, they have experience of years and years and years and things they have done in Russia, Romania, Poland, uh, China, so many years. <laughs> Your experience is much less. So start with giving them the book or from the book, ask them different questions, different things, and let them um, let them understand those. Don't, don't be just against them, you know, up front. Ask them questions. And uh, slowly and surely, you will open their, their minds and hearts. I, I have to say that I have the privilege, I understand that I'm talking from my own experience. I'm not talking from someone reading someone's book on everything, and I understand that it's powerful. But um, again, if they want to talk with me, give them, you know, the information, and I'll be more than happy. We can even organize a, a Zoom uh, event and uh, I let them ask the question. Uh, I'm here to help. I'm here to uh, um, sound uh, the trumpet and to tell them and everyone uh, brainwash that um, what we have is uh, what a lot of people all over the world will die for. There is no reason for us to give up our freedom. It's uh, always good to um, make it even better but not go to a prison land, what I call socialist and communist. Um, so I don't know, um, um, somebody said that doesn't have the sound. I, uh, I'm, I, I think that I'm speaking really loud and I, uh, I am, um, I hope uh, you you heard me, and um, I'm grateful for the time that we had together. Uh, if you have any questions, just put them in the comments, and and I will respond uh, to you. Um, so, um, that that will be great if you want to share uh, share this. Um, um, that will be that will be wonderful. Um, that's a, that's a great opportunity for uh, for others, um, you know, to share this, to do a watch party, and uh, to share this uh, this event. Um, uh, I um, I don't know um, if I can find uh, another. Uh, 
We are a blessed nation and we have been blessed uh, by uh, um, to bless others uh, in many ways. And one of the things that um, this, uh, these people, um, young people um, lack is the fact that um, they um, went to, to school uh, not with an organized plan about how to start and finish. They had a school dads and many of them instead of finishing college in four years, they finished in six years, they accumulated a lot of debts and everything and many of them never travel outside of United States and it's very easy to to lie to those people and say, oh, it's horrible. But if you have the money to go outside of United States and visit any of those socialist country, you will just run back to America and you will be a great advocate for a capitalist and you will tell everyone that's not true, that's a lie, everything that they are, uh, they are telling, telling us. So, uh, Talk with your friends at college or university. Talk with your friends uh, that might uh, uh, be confused about uh, socialists and, and capitalists and make sure you go and vote and um, keep this, this country, this country free, keep this country um, um, a blessing, not only for us, generations to come, but for the entire world. Uh, we have a responsibility. We are here for a reason, with a purpose, and the purpose is to keep um, this country free. We receive it from others who died, many of them died, to give us a free country and freedom that we have. We have a responsibility to give to uh, the next generation um, a free country. So go and vote and vote for Donald Trump. Uh, I don't see any other questions. Um, I will stay a few, few more minutes, few more seconds if somebody um, uh, ask, uh, ask the questions. I appreciate the opportunity uh, to be here and to share. If any of you want to contact me and uh, to do a Zoom or something uh, with a group of people or somebody to help them to understand and to vote for Donald Trump, I will be more than happy. Um, other than that, I believe that uh, we can... Uh, um, I'll, Thank you so much, Bill. I appreciate that that you love this. I hope you, you will you will do. Uh, I will share this. We'll do a watch party. We'll um, be very active because that's what what we're supposed to to do and say to be a doers and to keep freedom alive. Um, I don't see anything else, so I will say God bless you. Uh, you always uh, can email me, call me, and uh, you know send me messages. Um, that is uh, at the website virginiapradanbooks.com. That is uh, a way to contact me, and I will be happy to help in any way possible. God bless you, and have a wonderful evening. Go and vote and vote for Donald Trump. Vote for freedom. Bye-bye.